Hey everyone, welcome to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm starting a new video series about how to run a successful sports card break on YouTube. Uh, this is meant to be a beginner's guide um, for people that may be interested in getting into running breaks on YouTube. So this is not a definitive like end all be all, but the idea would be to give you guys uh, that are interested in possibly doing breaks some tips, some tricks, some stuff that has worked for me, some stuff that hasn't worked for me, and to kind of give you a rough guide um, and some tips and pointers on how you could also run a successful break on YouTube. So as part of this video series, um, I think I'm going to break it into eight different parts. Um, the part that we're going to cover today is planning and setting expectations. So uh, this will cover, you know, what are your goals for the break and kind of some beginning questions that you'll want to ask yourself before you decide to run a break to see if it's something that is feasible for you and something that you can set up to be successful. Uh, part two will be um, all about choosing the right product and determining the right pricing. So we'll get into, you know, what is it that you what what product do you want to uh, break? What are you interested in? And determining pricing to where you can set it up for success for yourself as well as for the people that would be breaking with you. Um, part three is going to be how to promote a break. Um, promotion is probably one of the most important parts, especially for a beginner um, that doesn't have a audience that trusts you uh, because you would be starting out um, and really so it's how do you get people to buy into your break um, and there's a lot of tips that will be a fun one to cover uh, part four will be the pre break preparation um, and some tips on how to make your live stream uh, be successful um, and some tips on how to make sure that when uh, that when you are going to be live um, some tips on how to set up right beforehand to ensure that everything goes smoothly uh, part five is going to be how to uh, actually do the live break. Uh, this will be a fun one as well. Um, how do you randomize spots if that's the type you're going to be breaking? Um, and how do you have an entertaining break that keeps your audience engaged? Uh, so on and so forth. So that'll be a fun one. And then part six will be uh, tips on how to sort and package. Um, that is a time consuming uh, effort for any breaker, so some tips on how to make that go more smoothly. And uh, part seven, um, a shipping tutorial. So how do you ship all these out and um, how do you make that as effective for your uh, audience as well as for you to ensure that you get stuff out in a timely fashion and at a reasonable cost. And then finally, part eight, uh, how to measure success after your break. Um, and success can be defined in a lot of different ways. So without further ado, let's get into part one, which is planning and setting expectations. Um, so this is probably, out of all the steps, the most important thing to uh, consider when you get into a break. Um, there are some questions that you would want to ask yourself before um, before you decide to buy product and all that, these are the questions you want to ask yourself to really um, understand if this is something that you do want to take on and something that you can set up to be successful. So setting goals and expectations, just like as anything else in life, is probably something you want to do before you begin um, so, you're, so you maximize your potential for success. So the things that I would recommend that you ask yourself um, you know, what are your goals? A uh, lot of different goals you could have in a break, um, especially on YouTube. So if you're a smaller YouTuber like myself, um, your goal could very much be build an audience and build a community um, and that helps grow your channel. Um, and so that could be one of your goals. Uh, another goal that personally I have is uh, to understand the, uh, the baseball card product. So what I mean by that, is do you understand the set that you're breaking? So a lot of times, um, if you're into collecting, that's one of those things where you say, hey, um, you know, how knowledgeable am I about the product that I'm buying? And one way to do that is to actually break it live. Uh, but uh, so for example, on the new 2020 sets that are coming out, um, do you understand what, 
uh, all the inserts and all the autographs and the pack odds. Um, what are the parallels? Um, are there uh, image variation cards, short prints, so on and so forth. So um, part of breaking really makes you knowledgeable about that side. So in your personal collection, you know more about what you want to target. Um, and then a third one is, you know, is your goal to be uh, to make money on breaks, which is possible, although, you know, you'll want to manage expectations there, um, especially considering that a lot of breaks um, may or may not be profitable. Um, I think there's a misconception out there that when people break cards, they make a ton of money. Um, this is not a get rich quick scheme. Depending on what you're breaking, you can make a little bit of money to maybe help support your uh your expenses in the hobby. But in all reality, uh, especially when you're starting out, this is not something that you're going to make thousands and thousands of dollars on right from the get go. So I think managing expectations on profits and really having your goals set forth on how much it is that you want to make on a break um, will really set you up for success in the future. And keep in mind that uh, one of the big things on breaking is, especially when you're new, uh, your audience you need to build trust with them. And what I have found is um, with pricing that you probably want to be more competitive to begin with. Um, so that way you can build trust. Uh, and when you build trust, you'll build, uh, you'll get repeat buyers um, and repeat customers that enjoy your breaks because they know that you can deliver. Um, but to get people to buy into a break for a first time is not easy. So one of the ways that you could, um, that you could manage getting more people into your breaks early on is to set really uh, good pricing on stuff. And maybe you're not making money on your breaks in the beginning, but you are building an audience and a customer base. Um, and then the next thing is once you've set those goals, you really want to plan out how you're going to get there. Um, so you want to think about things like how, how do you plan on uh, promoting your break? Um, are you going to do it solely through YouTube? Um, do you have, um, an audience that trusts you um, outside of YouTube, maybe that's on Patreon, or maybe uh, you, or, or maybe you sell cards at card shows and you know some people and have some emails. Are, can you email out to people? Um, the other thing is, uh, what I have found is with product education is a key to this. There's nothing worse than watching someone breaking on YouTube and it's obvious that they do not know enough about the product that they are breaking. Um, it's one thing to not be able to pronounce every last name of, of a baseball card player, but it is very good to know, um, you know, what the inserts are. What uh, if you come across a short print uh, image variation that you know that it is one? Um, uh, it, it's always awkward when the people watching the break know more about the cards than the person that is breaking them. And I find that that is something that's pretty common on YouTube, that people buy product and just break it without knowing what they're actually breaking. Um, so that, um, so product education, how, how are you going to educate yourself on the product? You can do that, uh, you know, via the web. You can do that by maybe breaking a box um, for yourself personally before you do it live. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, um, understanding cost evaluation um, and, say, and knowing, hey, if you bought a box for, say, $100, um, that there's more expenses um, to that than meets the eye. Yes, the box might cost you um, $100, but what's the cost of shipping? What's the cost of um, supplies like top loaders and sleeves, um, envelopes and, and padded mailers? So. Those are all things to take into account and understanding what your expenses are up front. Um, if you are interested in profitability is really going to help you on your bottom line later. And then three, um, what level of customer uh, service do you want to provide? Um, I find that a lot of breakers, you, you know, once they've done the live break, you never hear from them again. Um, how fast do you want to get a breakout? Um, I, I know personally that when I buy into breaks, I would like to, I, I understand that it takes time to ship, but I would like to get my cards more than, um, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. Um, there's nothing worse than buying into a break and then you get the cards a month later and it's almost like you forgot that you got them in the first place. So these are all things that when you're uh, setting goals and expectations to consider. So as we move on, um, there are some, uh, there, there is a moment of honesty that you've got to 
um, come to grips with with yourself. Um, and these are the questions that I normally will ask before I set up a break, um, especially when I was first starting out breaking. The first one is, do you have a big enough audience to sell a full break? Remember that like in a baseball card break or, or really any sports card break, um, you're going to have anywhere from 30, maybe 32 spots to fill up. Um, and if you have an audience of 100 on your YouTube channel, that would require 30% of your audience buying into a break. So um, there's a, some tips on how you could sell a break a little bit differently. Maybe you can sell it by division, so you only have to sell six spots. Um, but really understanding how big your audience and managing the expectation of are you big enough to actually do a break yet? Normally, with you know, if you have 300, 400 subscribers, you can probably sell out a full break. It may take you a little bit of time, but I, a lot of people that buy into a break and then if it takes three weeks to fill, um, that will probably turn off more, more of your audience than it will um, to encourage them to come back and buy into a break in the future. So that is a really important question and you just gotta be honest with yourself. Um, and if you don't think you're big enough, um, really try and focus instead of focus on trying to get a first breakout focus on how do you grow your audience by making good content on youtube um and that will help you up to uh, help you out to be more successful in the future uh the other thing is do you have the right technology to conduct a live break uh lots of different ways you could do this but understanding um you know platforms like Streamlabs, uh, uh stream yard um and, and also understanding, you know, are you going to do this from your video cell phone? Uh, do you have the right uh, Wi-Fi bandwidth so your break doesn't cut in and out? Um, do you have the right microphones? Um, do you have the right webcam? Um, and really understanding the technology will really set you up for success when you are breaking live. To that, uh, so you don't have uh, technological um, shortcomings during the live stream because that can become a big issue during a live stream um, and then the other thing and I can't stress it enough do you know enough about the product that you want to break um, you really need to understand uh, the the product before you break it live your audience is going to expect you to be the professional and kind of the uh, what I would call like the standard bearer of the product that you're breaking that you don't want your audience telling you stuff that you've missed. You want to know what you're selling and you want to know the checklist. You want to know the key rookies. You want to know the key inserts. Um, it's really helpful to know the autographs, um, what the parallels are, what the odds are. Um, and you can have fun with that in your live stream as well. And there, And I do think that a lot of your audience will understand that sometimes you'll come across a card that maybe you don't know. Um, and so it's always good to have the website pulled up that will give you uh, that will give you the checklist. So that way, if you do come across a card in a live break that you don't know exactly what it is, that you can quickly um, be the authority and find that via a checklist while you're live streaming. Um, and that's really helpful. Another question would be, do you have enough supplies? Um, I've watched a few breaks where people run out of supplies and uh, you know, you're going to want to make sure you have a lot of top loaders, a lot of penny sleeves, um, one touches for really expensive cards. Um, and those are all things that really make your live stream go a lot smoother. So you, um, so do you have enough supplies? Um, having 20 top loaders on hand and doing a uh, live break is probably not enough top loaders. Uh, running out of penny sleeves, that's a bad idea in a live break. So you really, if, you know, if you don't have the supplies, lots of, lots of different places you can buy them and we'll cover, and we'll cover some of those places in future um, episodes in this video series. So, but that is a question you want to ask up front. Um, and then the other thing is, do you understand how you are going to ship packages? Shipping is a key to success in all this. That will happen after you break the cards. Uh, but do you understand how you're going to ship it? Are you going to do it? You uh, are, are you going to do it first class mail? Are you going to do it priority mail? Um, and that will dictate uh, how you want to price your break. So understanding shipping and understanding the different ways that you can ship cards, the different ways that cards can be shipped, whether that be in boxes, whether that be in padded envelopes. Um, you really want to understand your shipping up front um, to set you up for success in the future. And then most importantly. Um, can you commit enough time to conduct the break in a timely manner? We kind of covered this a little bit earlier, but 
um, really understanding how long it takes to uh, sort, to package, and to ship after a break. Uh, that is not something that occurs in a, in an hour or so, especially when you're starting out. Um, sorting cards, um, getting them all packaged up correctly, making sure that they're packaged safely, uh, creating shipping labels, that is a time-intensive um, um, undertaking. And so really, um, and understanding that your audience is going to want to get their cards in a timely manner. Um, you know, it may take an it may take a couple hours to conduct a live break, but it will take many more hours to get it shipped out in a timely manner. So, do you have enough time? And those are all questions you want to be real honest before you decide to do a break. Um, and if you've got positive responses to most of those questions, you probably um, are set up to begin planning a break. Um, and so, some tips when you're doing this planning and um, and setting goals and setting expectations. Um, for me, what I would recommend is one, uh, the first tip would be to start small. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying a case of the brand new 2020 set that's coming out and saying you're going to break eight boxes live. Um, one, it will be a little bit more expensive to do that. I, I find that if you're for small um, channels on YouTube, um, to do mixer breaks uh, where maybe you're breaking one, two, maybe three bo boxes of mixed product. Um, that that's probably a good place to start. If you've ever watched some of my breaks, sometimes I'll, I only break one box at a time. Uh, keep in mind, most boxes will have around 200 to 300 cards. Um, so that's something that is easy to, sh it's easier to uh, handle the packaging and shipping. Um, and what I do, and I still do, is only one break per week. I watch a lot of people who do like three breaks a week, and that probably, uh, unless you have enough time to do the shipping and all that, um, you really probably want to start small, maybe do one break a week, maybe one break every other week, um, just to kind of get your feet wet in it um, and to ensure that it'll be a successful uh, break for you and for your audience. So um, I would recommend not buying a ton of product. You will want to buy enough product that you actually get enough cards for all 30 spots in a baseball card break, for example. Um, breaking a product that only has 60 cards in it and then and selling spots to people then, then they don't end up with any cards. Um, that is a big no-no. Um, and it's actually may or may not be legal to sell something that doesn't actually exist. Um, so you really want to avoid that. So you probably want to start small, but make sure that you're going to break enough cards that everyone will get at least a few. Um, and so that would be my first tip. My second tip, um, and this tip will run throughout this video series. You always want to be well prepared. Uh, your um, so this, you know, make sure that when you have your technology, test it, make sure it's going to work right. Make sure you've got a stable Wi-Fi connection. Um, test, test, and test over and over and over again. Uh, again, make sure you have plenty of supplies before you break. That is something that um, is, a, is actually a fairly common uh, problem that you will see if you watch multiple live breaks. So make sure you've got one touches. Make sure you've got um, all the supplies you're going to need, um, and that includes things like um, like box cutters um, and, and stuff like that. So, so really think about when you're breaking live. Uh, you know, you probably want to have pads of paper on hand so you can um, and sticky notes so you can um, put who's getting what and you can write that down quickly during a live stream. Um, and then again, can't stress it enough. Uh, enough. Be knowledgeable about what it is that you're breaking. You want to be the authority on the checklist. You want to be the authority on the cards that are coming out. Um, and that will really help build trust in your audience that they know you understand what, what they're breaking. You know kind of the value of the cards, which ones should be top loaded. Uh, you know the key rookies, um, stuff like that. It's really helpful um, and it really makes for a more enjoyable live stream when you are breaking. Um, and then tip three when you're planning goals um, and expectations. One, be reasonable with yourself and always try and be reliable to your audience. Um, understand that when you're setting goals and expectations, this is not a get rich quick stream. If you are breaking one box of baseball cards that is worth $100 or $150, um, understand that your audience is also educated. They know what they should be paying for a break. So um, if you are getting into breaking thinking that this is going to be a get rich quick scheme for you, you probably are not going to be set up for a lot of, uh, a lot of success. 
Um, breakers do understand that you probably are making a little bit, uh, but they also are uh, knowledgeable about their wallets and they will buy something that is a fair price. Uh, but trying to double your money on a break or triple your money on a break, uh, you probably will not sell many spots. So you really want to be reasonable with what your pricing expectations are. Um, and then two, um, keep in mind your audience does expect you to be the professional. Um, they expect you to be the one that knows the product. They expect that you are giving them a, a fair price. Um, they a, And they expect that you're going to get the shipping and everything done on time. So reliability uh, will really help build an audience for you. It will bring repeat customers. Um, and it will make your live breaks that much more enjoyable for people to watch because uh, there is an entertainment value that goes into live breaks. And that is part of the reason why people buy into them. Um, they don't buy into them purely for the cards. They buy into them because they enjoy watching your content. They enjoy learning a little bit about the cards and being part of the community that you're uh, that you're building. Um, so really, be uh, these three tips right here. I think if you, I, I really think that if you start small, be prepared, uh, be reasonable with your expectations, and become a reliable. Um, a reliable expert in the cards that you're breaking for your audience. I think those are the, when you're planning, those are the things you really want to be mindful of. So with that, um, that, run, that, that will conclude part one of how to run a successful sports card break on YouTube. Um, the next uh, part in the series will be how do you choose product and how do you determine pricing? Um, with the goals and expectations that you've set, that would be the next step in determining uh, what you want to do with, with your live break. So you guys, if you like this video series, please throw over to first, hit that like button. Um, if you're not subscribed, now's the time to, because this is the first part in the series. We will make a uh, playlist on YouTube for this series. And I um, would love to know your guys' comments on what you think about this series and uh, any suggestions for what you think we should do um, in the parts of the video series that are coming up. So with that, guys, I hope you are having good luck on your pack breaks, um, and I hope that you find this, uh, this video to be informative. And with that, um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day.